What's up, everybody? James Duggan with IGN coming to you from BlizzCon 2017. Joining me is Tom Marks, Hello. who witnessed the epic battle between Team USA and oh, South yeah. Korea in the quarterfinal of the Overwatch World Cup. Now, you told me um, in private, so forgive me if I'm telling everybody else, that this was the match that sold Overwatch to you as an esport. You were kind of cold on it until this point. It did. So regale us with the tale. What happened? Yeah, I mean, I, I I think like many people was very skeptical of Overwatch as an esport. I think it's a hard game to watch, and Blizzard has addressed that. They very clearly said, you know what, we agree. Uh, and they added all these improvements with costumes and, and character skins and ability colors that match the teams. and it worked like I think this was the game that really really made me believe in it because partly because it was live and you know live sports live esports are always so so fun um, but also it was just an incredible overwatch series it was really amazing you know everyone discounted the US in this uh, everyone has been assuming since the very beginning of this tournament that South Korea was gonna be the victor so when you look at the stats I mean the stats tell a different story which is close to a sweep it's 3-1 yeah. South Korea but you're saying that is not the case and that's what is so awesome about esports and being able to witness this live and remotely with these new yeah. spectator tools I think is like there is a, a story of, of triumph here for Team US that, that was not favored going in and ended up not winning, but the point is, they put up an awesome fight, and you were able to witness that, and the crowd was electric. It was it was pure energy in that room. It was really amazing. People chanting, USA, USA. Like, it was just great. I came, I walked into the stadium with people chanting USA and the American flag, like, flying above, and I was like, yeah, I could see this being <laughs> one of the most popular things in the world in a number of years. And yeah, the 3-1 the scoreline doesn't really tell the story, because also it was like, kind of actually 4-2 mm. because the third map uh, was a draw. It was on Hanamura and like draws barely ever happen in competitive Overwatch anymore but it was 4-4 four, four on Hanamura. Uh, there was a push where the, the US team held held uh, South Korea to like overtime again where it was just like unbelievable. They took point A in overtime. They only had 30 seconds to take Jeez. point B and they did it. Wow. And then they immediately went back on offense and we got this rematch again. Um, the thing that was incredible throughout this entire thing though and has to be mentioned is the story of uh, Jake versus Flower. Jake was one of the uh, one of the players on Team USA. Flower is a player on uh, Team South Korea. And it was basically their fight the entire series. It was these two DPS players going head to head. And like, Flower had just some incredible, like, triple kill headshot sprees wow. on Widowmaker. Meanwhile, Jake was getting like triple kills of his own on Junkrat. Like, they were just incredible to so, watch go against each other. So, do these players stick specifically to like Widowmaker and Junkrat, as you were saying? I know everybody can uh, attest that like somebody like Boy Boy is famous for playing Gasuo. Right. So, we are kind of get used to seeing that and making this mental connection between the two, but Overwatch is a game where you can switch heroes mid-match, and did they do that often? Was that part of the strategy, and, and how did you keep up with that action? No, they did, they did. Uh, especially on Oasis, both of them were jumping on Pharah a lot. Also, uh, Flower had a lot of incredible plays uh, on, on Soldier. He had play, incredible plays on Genji and Pharah. Jake, as well, was on Soldier for a while, just doing really, really amazing stuff. But it kept coming back to that Widowmaker, and you know, I, it, sometimes you just get on a roll with a hero, you really get into the group with them, and Flower was on a roll with Widowmaker, and Jake was on a roll with Junkrat. So it sounds like this sold you on the idea of, of Overwatch uh, as an esport, and that's doubly important as we move into Overwatch League, which is this kind of conventional sports take on esports that has a lot of resources behind it, a lot of big names. Uh, so. What are you looking forward to seeing from Overwatch League? Do you think that this can translate, or is this just one freak occurrence? Can you expect this level of esports fidelity moving into the future? Uh, I hope so. I'm not honestly sure yet, but I, I think one of the things that made this such a fun match for me was I had a team to root for. I had the USA, right? Like if it was, and, and I, I love all sorts of other esports. I love League of Legends stuff, but like if it was Cloud9 versus Fnatic up there, I don't think it would have been nearly as exciting as a match as USA versus South Korea. Mm -hmm. And when we get into the Overwatch League, rooting for San Francisco <laughs> is gonna be something that motivates me a lot more than rooting for kind of a, a generic esports organization. Um, I think, I hope at least that that will propel it into a kind of a, a bigger audience. Awesome, we can't wait to see how that wraps up. Of course, you were saying San Francisco's gonna get a team. We're gonna get all of those stats as well as the team names coming up at BlizzCon 2017. So make sure you keep it right here on IGN.